Welcome to Minute Maid. Well, actually, five and a half hour Maid Park here in Houston. <laughs> I'm Chris Berman with the skipper Larry Boa, Harold Reynolds, Peter, Peter Gammons, and uh, we saw a lot of baseball this evening. Yes, we did. And this morning, lots of baseball. And if you're tuned in late and missed some of it, that's what we're here for. Well, they say that everything is bigger in Texas. And in the first game ever World Series history in the state of Texas, proof was positive. Here we go with the Houston Astros down two games to none against the Chicago White Sox. The rampaging Chicago White Sox. And the lineups beforehand, the hero from Sunday night was Scott Pichetnik. The roof open, a lot of chatter about it. And Nolan Ryan, roof open, roof closed. He's still fast throughout the first pitch amid the light bulbs. John Garland, only his second start in 24 days. And against Lance Berkman with a runner at second in the first inning. Berkman with a base hit. Craig Biggio was at it. You knew he would. It was just so fitting he had a big game, first home game. They're Here's ready to rip the roof. Even if they close the roof, then it tore it down as loud as this place got. Bottom of the third and the first for Roy Oswald, Adam Everett, and here's a break. Finally, Houston's way. The throw hits Everett. Harold, you never see that, do you? No, crazy play. Everett played it great. He stopped in the middle, forced. There was no place for for Reba to throw the ball, and you see Ozzy's disgusted by the play. You got a pitch out with the pitcher hitting, and it didn't execute. There goes the gum. After a sack bunt, gets Everett to second. Biggio, base hit. And Bijo with a couple of hits. You know, he's waited his whole life to play these home he, games. And the Astros up 2 nothing. He sure has, Boomer. And I'll tell you what, Garland started off a little shaky. But I'm going to tell you something. He hung in there. He hadn't pitched in a while. And he made pitches at the end. And here's a call that went. Another call that went the Astros' way. Jason Lane is Angel Hernandez. The third base home run said home run. Now, look, we're closest to that ball where we are yeah, in center field. You know today. We're I don't blame the umpire. This is silly quirkiness. Even Aaron Rowland didn't protest because he doesn't even know what those Allen rules are. Well, I agree, but it did go home run, although later look was it a double. Now, Joe Creedy, how many big blasts has he hit this I'll tell you what, season, Creedy's fellas? been swinging it, and this is the dreaded fifth inning for Oswald. Here's the fifth inning with a 4 nothing lead for Roy Oswald. Iguchi up with two men on a base hit to center. Uribe scores, and now it's a 4-2 to two game. Here come the White Sox, who've won 14 of their last 15. Jermaine, live and let die. Blooper. That was a great Scott at bat. Pichetnik scores. That yep. was a great at bat. It was an eight-pitch at bat. And I'll tell you what. I don't know how he hit that ball, but he did. And then A.J. Pruszynski with the score. Four, three. Back, 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 back. He's always in the middle of it, huh? Well, he shows you how big that ballpark is in center because he absolutely crushed that ball. It didn't come close to getting out of here. So two-run shot with two out for Pruszynski. And the 4 nothing after a lead is now 5-4. But wait, there's more, as they say on late-night TV. Joe Creedy, who led off the inning with a homer, gets hit. He's not happy. He jaws at Oswald. 11 guys would come to the plate for the White Sox. Here's Carl Everett. He's screaming at the Astros bench. Phil Garner, he's screaming back. All told, 11 is a World Series record for most guys up in one inning. A lot of frustration in that inning. Bottom of the seven now, still 5-4. The Astros looking for something going since that home run double, if you will. But John Garland gets Biggio. Six straight change-ups. Throws a face of fastball in the outside corner. Unbelievable. So pitch. still 5-4 here, Peter. Cliff Polite is uh, coming on to face Morgan Ensberg with two out in the bottom of the eighth. Ozzy comes out to make a pitching change. The fast-throwing lefty, Neil Cox, to be good, but he walks Mike Lamb. And with Dustin Hermanson and Bobby Jenks warming up in the pen, you obviously go, oh, I want the little guy. Yeah, I, I want was, the little right hand. I thought he was going to Jenks, but he brought in Hermanson, who hadn't pitched in a long time. Since September 30th, and it showed Jason laying down the line. But Ensberg it, scores, and we're going to be tied at five. And that ball goes all the way to the corner. The other runner is going to come around and score. Uribe. It's just a, a Uribe, little play. Man. Great play right there. Next man up is Brad Ospis, but Hermanson gets him. The Astros do tie it up on their only hit since the fourth inning. Now Brad Lidge. Would he get back in form? Yes, sir, against Aaron <laughs> Rowan. He martins him well, with he the strikeout. He said hadn't seen a slider. He was going to use it a lot more, and yes, he did. It was very effective. Bottom of the ninth, El Duque on. Runners at the corners, one out against Willie Tavares. There's the Whirlybird. Remember how big El Duque was game three against Boston with bases loaded. Berkman walks. Did I say bases loaded? El Duque just stands there until he gets the guy he wants to get out. <laughs> and tremendous. Ensberg is the guy that he gets out, Peter. 5-5, five, five, oh, we're going to extras. And did we say extras? We meant many an extra. After he walks Orlando Palmero in the bottom of the 10th, 
The trainer comes out. El Duque comes out. Luis Vizcaino with two on, two out against Chris Burke. Another one of those Astros heroes, but not tonight. I'll tell you what, Boomer, you got to give this bullpen credit. A lot of these guys haven't been pitching in two or three weeks, and they're coming in throwing strikes and doing a great job. Now two on, two out, top of the 11. Chad Snowqualls is in, and pinch hitter Timo Perez grounds out. Neither team capitalizing here. We go to the bottom of the 11th as the clock strikes 12 central time. Fans trying to hang in. Nolan Ryan, could he be warming up? Bobby Jenks now on. The two on, one out against Ensberg. He gets him to pop it. Boomer in a span of eight outs. The White Sox were walked eight batters, hit another one, and the Astros scored one run. And then against Jenks, Orlando Palmero grounds it to the big fella. That's we're tied fun. after 11. Top of the 13th. The lineup card. I mean, it looks like the 40-man roster. Doesn't Everybody play. <laughs> He's up. This this young fan is now awake. <laughs> and now with one on, none out. Walls against Pacific. The butt attempt, but Osmus does. It goes from foul to fair. Brad pounces on it. This Look, game began with four double plays play. early. You know, here's another one. Another one of those questionable plays. He got it out in front of the plate, though. It didn't look like it at first. Right there, it looks like he might have got it. Good call, double play. So it's a night where seemingly the Astros getting the breaks. The call on the homer, the ball hitting the runner at second base. So could they convert? In the this 14th, it's Ezekiel play. Estacio gets Canerco, and Ensberg starts a 5-4-3 double play. Now the ball's been pounded, but there's two on, two out and none on, Ooh. except Jeff Blum. Kenny Williams trading deadline acquisition. Do you remember Tom Wallace in 1987? <laughs> Jeff Blum with the homer. That ball's down and in, and he did what left-handed hitters do with it. He First World it. Series at bat, Blum does it. They get another run on a bases loaded walk to Chris Witcher, but when a rebate makes this error in the bottom of the 14th, there's two on, two out, and summon game two starter Mark Burley. What a sight. Unbelievable, this he guy. He starts game two, and he's going to end game three. The first guy to start and save a game in the series since Catfish Hunter in 74. And the Chicago White Sox, they hang, they hang, they hang, and they win it in 14 innings by the count of 7-5. to five. Jeff Blum joins only Dusty Rhodes as a guy in his first World Series at bat to hit a home run. Rhodes won a game in 1954. Blum essentially wins this one. The White Sox win it 7-5. It means the world right now. It's going to mean even more, uh, you know, if we go in and close this thing out tomorrow. Um, uh, it's the stuff dreams are made of. I've had about, uh, you know, 100 of these at bats in, the, in my backyard with my younger brother. Um, but to do it uh, in this, uh, on this stage, in this situation, it makes uh, this year uh, incredibly worthwhile. It's a surprise, you know, it's a surprise because this kid even played in two months. I think the last at was in Cleveland, and no, Detroit, and the Saints. They even had one at bat, and he get a hold of one, and uh, thank God he did it at the right time because I was running out of pitchers. He's a great guy. Um, you know, I love him to death. He's, he's got a great family. He's got had triplets this year, so um, he's had a big year. Um, you know, uh, but you know, he was a great teammate. We, we missed him when he was gone, and and uh, once again, he came an Astro came back to haunt us a little bit. But uh, what are you gonna do? Jeff Bagwell, classy as always, and among the things that'll go in the books, the longest game in innings, tying one in 1916, won by Babe Ruth for the Boston Red Sox. So Babe Ruth, Damaso Marte, the guys that have wins in 14-inning World Series games. <laughs> Ruth has more homers, 43 players used. Do want to correct something? Jeff Blum in his first World Series at bat a home run. The only other guy to do that in extra innings was Dusty Rhodes. And a city of Chicago says thank you to this 2005 White Sox team who erased an even larger drought than one we were talking about last year with spirit and moxie and almost perfection in the postseason. The White Sox, 11 of 12 in the postseason, dousing themselves in champagne and holding the World Series trophy high. That trophy wasn't that heavy the last time they won it back in 1917. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to Houston with the skipper, Larry Boa, Harold Reynolds, and Peter Gammons. And history, we, we all love history. We saw history out here be made here this week and right here in Houston. Well, history, 1917. The Lusitania was sunk. The United States was brought into World War I. World War I. 
And that was the last year the Chicago White Sox won a World Series. The last time they were in it was 1959. And now you tell me that there's an 88-year drought for the White Sox, and they're going to finish it off with a World Series sweep? Well, that was what they tried to do in Houston. Major League Baseball's Latino Legends team announced before the game Luis and Roberto Jr. Clemente honoring his dad, Juan Marichal, Fernando Valenzuela, Pedro, A-Rod, Edgar Martinez, uh, Pudge, some of the others named to the team. All right. Meanwhile, we have a scoreless game. Freddie Garcia won in each of the rounds against Boston and against the Angels. And Freddie Garcia up to the task. Lane Bottom of the six, out. Jason Lane with, with the bags. Houston two outs. Gets a strikeout. Garcia four hits. Seven inning pitch. Struck out seven. But meanwhile, Brandon Bakke, who came in and warmed up in the five and a half hour game Homer. seven, he was great. 17 swings and misses on his slider in seven innings. Unheard of. He came five in a row at one point. The World Series record is six in a row. And now Brad Lidge, you've been such a good player, but another name you don't think of, Willie Harris, pinch hit, single to lead the eighth inning for Chicago. And then Scott Pudsednik with a butt. Oh, they can play long ball, medium ball, and little ball. And it's your game. He's been in the National League before, and so has the pinch hitter, Carl Everett. They get the out here, but it moves the guy to third base. So third base, two out, and Jermaine live and let die is up. Two hits earlier in the game up the middle. Base hit for die. Harris scores. The White Sox have finally scored, and they lead it one to nothing. Two out hits are hard to come by. You get two out hits, you win a lot of ball games. Cliff Pleas. <laughs> He's impolite right here. He hits the speedy Willie Tavares. Next man to the hit. Too. Up. And Lance Berkman, the ball goes away. And for a minute, Tavares was thinking about third. Well, this may have been the biggest pitch of the night against the Astros because that took the bat of Berkman out of his hands. They intensely walked him. And you know what the rest of the lineup's been doing? They've been scuffling. Ozzy brings in Neil Cott to face the pinch hitter, Jose Vizcano. And look at Juan Uribe with a gun to end the eight. Juan Uribe played a great game, not only tonight, but the whole series. This guy's been tremendous. And now Bobby Jenks in double A in July. 24-year-old Bobby Jenks trying to close it and finish it. Jason Lane, uh-oh, blooper. And the tying run is on in the bottom of the night for the Astros who never gave up. The president, Barbara Bush, all looking on, trying to will the Astros. Lane at second after he's advanced there by a bunch by Osmus. And here's a rebate. He doesn't even play in this park. Look at the play he made. And that's not Derek Jeter. That's Juan Uribe. Unbelievable play. The play of the series defensively, in which the White Sox made several. And Cenk says, you're going to give me that? I'm going to give you this. Looking on Jeff Bagwell and pinch it earlier. Craig Biggio had a hit earlier in the game, but his last at bat not successful. Can they do it? Orlando Palmero is the pinch hitter. Biggio would have been next. Jenks can't get it. Uribe fires just in time. And the White Sox have won it. The White Sox winning game four by the scantest of margins. One to nothing. Pour out of the field for the Astros. And the game, Craig Biggio, been with the squad since 88. Another year to wait. Frank, big Frank couldn't play in the postseason, but he's a big part of the squad. And how about the, you love this, the guns of Uribe. It's unbelievable. Juan Uribe did a tremendous job. He made two great plays back to back to lead them to this victory. And so much talk about replay. Gary Cedars can make that call yes. right there. And that was a tremendous call in the series. So the White Sox, when there's the MVP, Jermaine Dye. 7 of 16, 438 in the series, three hits on this night. And A.J. Brzezinski, Captain Chaos, in the middle of everything. And won't some of his plays in this postseason be talked about forever? And won't this be talked about on the south side of Chicago, the baddest part of town? 1917, <laughs> goodbye. 2005, the White Sox beat the Astros by the count of one nothing. The manager... And the winning pitcher, Freddy Garcia, from Venezuela, Ozzy Guillen, two years ago was the third base coach of the Marlins, played over 1,700 games as a White Sox. Now he skippered him to the championship. That's the first time in my life, last two innings, my, my heart was pounding like crazy. But, you know, because uh, I was nervous, just because I was so excited 
I said, when this moment is going to happen? A lot of people waiting for this moment, and wow, it went through. It's what we dream about, uh, getting the World Series and then, then winning it. I mean, it's, it's a great accomplishment, and uh, you know, I'm just happy for everybody, you know, the players, the fans, the city, and uh, we're going to enjoy this one for a long time. It's been a long, long ride, and I'm happy, man. I'm just happy I'm still active in this organization to get to this moment. This team deserves this, and like I told people earlier, people always told me, yeah, you need to leave to get a ring. No, I'm happy to stay in Chicago, and I got a ring with a team that I really wanted to win a win ring with. We just believed. We, we got it going right at the end of September. Uh, we went into Cleveland, you know, played them great, and just kind of rolled from there, and we believed every game we could win, no matter what the score, no matter what the situation, we proved it. The Chicago White Sox, not only an 88-year drought by the boards, they're one of the very few teams to start the season in first and end it in first, never out of there. The last team, Lou Pinella's Reds of 1990, Sparky's Tigers, the Dodgers that broke the curse. I just don't like to lose. Our team lost. We lost. That wasn't them and me. I'm ticked off when we lose. I don't like to lose. I get embarrassed when we lose and we're in front of our people. Um, I'm disappointed and I'm, I'm ticked off that we didn't win a game in this World Series. A lot of these games could have went our way. Um, if the way you look at the way the games were played, uh, we just couldn't catch a break. Uh, like I said, I think it was more fate or destiny, whatever you want to call it, was on their side than it was ours. Somebody's going to be disappointed when this thing's over, and, and I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, obviously, you, you get here, you might as well win this thing, but uh, it didn't happen for us. We, got, we kind of got a little bit outplayed. Uh, they just played a little bit better than we did in this series. It was a close series. Obviously, any game could have gone either way, but uh, they were just a little better than we were. We all congratulate each other on great years. Uh, you know, this is, uh, it's tough to to get swept in a World Series. Uh, you know, it's, 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 they did an unbelievable job of pitching today, obviously, and, and um, you know, we, we've congratulated each other. Um, no one's hanging their heads on this season. 